Hello. We're going to delete the body that is underneath our uh, tabard, our, our tunic. We're going to clone the body first, hide the clone, and then we're going to delete here. But before we get quite that far, we want to change our rendering. Uh, the reason that we want to change our rendering, there it is, um, is so that we can see what's going on underneath our tunic. Now there are a lot of things we need to delete. Basically everything from here down needs to go. Um, but not entirely everything, and we'll see in a second what I mean by that. Uh, we definitely want to lose as much of the complex uh, bust region as we can. Um, and this could go. And in the back we can see everything looks fine. We can lose some more on the back, but we're not going to lose it all just yet. There is a problem here, uh, and that is that we have this open front. So we need to actually deselect the faces that we want here. Now we also need to worry about the idea that the player might look at this angle and we don't want any gaps so we need to actually leave a fair amount of uh, the upper chest in place so that the player doesn't feel uh, weird when he sees a giant gaping mass of emptiness. There we are. That should be more or less correct. We could stand to lose this and this and this and this. Ooh. I think that'll do. Let's delete it. Delete the faces. And that leaves us with plenty of uh, cl uh, of skin. And we're going to want to delete more on the back here, just because the back is going to be the subject of a lot of bending. But we want to be sure to just take the back. We don't want to accidentally take the front as we try and get the back. So if we grab this here... There we are. Oh, look, I missed a line. So how much of the back do we want to keep? Well, it's better to keep too much and then delete it later. So let's go ahead and just do it like this. Now that we've deleted the underlying mesh, we can go back and start to shape our tunic correctly. Uh, now to do this, you just use the sculpt mode. If you don't have a tablet, you can always use your mouse. It'll take a little bit longer, but whatever. So in our sculpt mode, there are a couple of small details we need to take care of first. And those are all trying to smooth out the errors that were created by our adaptation of the underlying mesh. So in this case, we wanted to smooth out the bust area because it was uh, distorted pretty badly. Uh, we could also get some smoothing done down here in the belly area uh, since we don't need to have it skin tight at the belly. And in the back, we have this spinal ridge and we want to get rid of that. I'm going to use flatten. No, I'm not. I'm going to use polish. Hmm, it doesn't like this. Come on, people. Give me a... Oh, I don't have it. I forgot. You have to actually apply the mirroring, otherwise otherwise you get this kind of error in the back here. That's better. There. At this point, inflate is your best friend. And let's turn on symmetry. It's not going to end up being symmetrical in the end, but it's, it should be symmetrical at this point. So just use your symmetry brush to bring up all of the pieces that you're going to need, like this. Uh, the inflate and deflate is your best friend when you are editing um, when you are editing things that have only one side, because uh, it can't uh, accidentally destroy the structure of it, like uh, like most of the other brushes can. Here you can see that we've gotten some pretty uh, facey sort of situations going here. It's not um, it's not as smooth as we might like, so we can just pull those in a little bit. And we might as well grab this wing and bring it in. But the problem is that uh, we need to actually rearrange a fair amount of the topology in this area, just pulling it in a little bit. And, of course, we do not like it being under the skin, so switch back to the inflate brush and pull it out. There we go. That's not going to work. It's going to be tough to uh, reintroduce a bust now that we've deleted the, the uh, portion that was actually um, shaped specifically to be the bust. And one of the options we have is to leave that portion intact, but that gives us a really tight 
shirt, um, like aggressively tight, and I don't think that was a good fit for us. So we'll just slowly work this out here. There. Uh, some days it's a little bit difficult. Let's choose grab. That'll do. All right, that is more or less correct. We can always adjust it later as we need to. Um, and of course, if we really want to, we can introduce more topology in the area if that turns out to not be enough. The other thing we need to be careful of is uh, this is a skin tight torso area, and that's because we cloned the skin to make it. But that's not a very good um, way to actually do things. It's better if your characters uh, actually look like they have some mass uh, in their clothes. A lot of people make the mistake of making their clothes skin tight, thinking it'll be better or sexier or whatever, and it's really not a very good way to do things. Uh, you should not feel afraid to bulk up your character's uh, clothing. It gives it a, a better a sense of actually existing. And you'll have to pardon, there's someone who has decided it's uh, trash day or something. So now we have created this setup where we have a tunic that is relatively tunic-like, but it doesn't have the... Um, uh, there are a couple of small bugs with it, like it doesn't have the wrinkles that it needs and stuff like that. Now if you've ever gone and done wrinkle uh, mapping here in um, uh, here in sculpt mode, you probably think that might be the best way to do wrinkles, but it's really not. Uh, that's not, not a very good way to do wrinkles at all when you don't have enough verts to actually sustain the wrinkles. But we can use the thumb to help us out here. Uh, the thumb is an easy way to distort an underlying mesh, and that can give you uh, a sense of it being saggy like this. Now you do have to be careful to not make it feel like it is a, um, uh, a saggy portion. Now we are actually distorting the mesh here. You can see how it's gone from being that nice, uh, nice square feeling to having this bowed edge. And that may not be the best idea, depending on how we want it to work. So I'm going to go and undo the thumbs, uh, redo. And what we're going to do instead of that is we're going to be, instead of dragging down, we're going to be expanding on the back. So well, let's use grab. And we can just pull these things back very slightly. And that'll give it a little bit of a feeling that it's, uh, uh, you know, kind of not stuck to her skin quite as much. And this will be part of the wrinkles that we'll end up painting in, although they're not wrinkles yet. Similarly, the underside of the chest doesn't need to be... Um, we can probably use smooth. The bust doesn't need to be uh, sharp in sharp relief because it's supposed to be um, a kind of not saggy necessarily, but loose fitting uh, garment, and that means that things like this are, are generally going to work. And of course you can always use the wonderful inflate brush to actually finish up any of the details that you can't get to work using the drag brush, which is fine. The inflate, br inflate, inflate brush is probably my favorite. I've got it set to a low strength so that I can control it really quite easily. And here you can see that we have uh, something that sort of looks like a wrinkle, uh, but it is a little bit too much. So let's grab and pull these guys out. There we are. We can actually bring these guys in. There we are. And that's going to be our tunic's basic structure. Let me put this away now. What we would like to do at this point, move the mic. Uh, what we would like to do at this point is to actually make the um, the textures here work out. Now if we enter in, you can see that they are definitely distorted here. Uh, we've got a lot of low poly stuff happening here in the chest, and a lot of high poly stuff happening just beneath it. Uh, and that's just due to the way that we arranged them, and it's probably not the best way to do it. So we're going to go ahead and pull these back up using a nice wide grab brush.
Now mirror editing does not work when you are doing proportional editing, so you have to do this on both sides the same amount. There we are. That'll do to keep us more or less even. You can see that we actually cross over the x-axis here. So let's go ahead and undo these. Scale x negative 1. Nope. Um, Oh, because we've got proportional editing on. Disable proportional editing, scale x, negative 1. There we are. So this looks pretty good, but uh, that means we should save it as a new file. But it's not uh, correct yet, because it doesn't have any of the wrinkles that we need to build into it. And we're not going to be building it. A lot of our wrinkles are going to just be normal mapping, obviously. But we want to build in certain kinds of... of um, structures to make it feel right and that's going to include tipping this like so to get along with the belt uh, and this way when the character twists or bends they will be twisting or bending uh, along the line of the belt which should make the belt feel like it actually exists uh, we can do something similar here if we would like but our uh, adjustments have already made it feel pretty decent uh, what we can do is, you know, I don't think it's probably necessary to do anything there. We can just put those as uh, other kinds of wrinkles, normal map of wrinkles. So the last thing to do is to decide whether this is our structure or whether we want to have hems. Hems are really useful because of two things. First off, they give the edges of the cloth definition. You can do that using a normal map if you don't like hems. But the other reason hems are nice is because they will let us fix this see-through this th th see -through shit. We don't want to have that see-through shit. So what we need to do is we need to create hems. There are a lot of ways to create hems, uh, and I think that the one we're going to be using today is we're going to be taking this and we're going to be pressing Shift D to clone it. Now you can use E to extrude it, but that will malfunction in this case because it would extrude just one portion and we want all of these intact. So then we will shrink it a little bit and then we will flip the faces. And you can see how that's created our uh, our interior. And now we can use a nice little trick to bind this together. So we select the lower edge of the hem on both sides, and we press Control e Bridge Edge Loops. And it hems it nicely. Now this hem does not have a sharp rise, so if we wanted to have a hem that uh, that looked like a proper hem, we could put in a cut here and then bring it up like this. Oh. Bring it up like this. Oh. And that would give us uh, the feeling of actually having a hem hem. Hem hem hem. Uh, and if we wanted to do editing at this point, we would want to be real careful not to drop the hems inside of each other. Similarly, if we have this situation, you can see how the inside is invisible. So if the character, if the player looks down like this, uh, they will see nothing. It'll just be vanished. So we want to do the same thing here, uh, and that means basically we want to select a lot of the fabric, like so. And we'll want to deselect a good portion of it as well, because we do not need all of this. We only need some of it. <coughs> But it would be best to get all of the neck. Um, not that much neck. <laughs> we do not need the back. There are faster ways to select this stuff, but I always uh, default back to single clicking. I'm not sure why that is. There we go. So we have this mesh here now. And we can edit this a little bit better, because we don't need all of that work, just like this should do. Mm. I think I just put it back to the way it was. Whatever. Shift D. Oh, wait. We actually need to capture all of this, just in case. So Shift D to duplicate, and then scale down just a touch and then flip all of the directions and now if we look down we see the insides of course it is best if we uh, bind the two together at the edge loop here
I'm not sure we scaled it down enough. Oh, we scaled it down on the... Sorry. Let's do that again. Uh, I was in face edit mode, and unfortunately face edit mode doesn't scale properly, so shift D to duplicate, scale down in vertex mode. That will scale it properly. Now we can flip it, and now we can do it. Uh, the difference is that the face mode will distort the faces, and that's not what we wanted. Control E, bridge to edge loops, and we now have a mesh that will look fine no matter how you look at it. We could do the same thing for the arm, but I don't think it's as much of an issue, so we're not going to bother. Um, I think that this is more or less what we needed. We could, however, grab the arm and create a hem off of it, just because that would be a, um, a good thing to do, uh, visually speaking. And that, the easiest way to do that is to uh, E scale X 1.05, and then scale down like that. And then we can actually grab the line here. E and move it out a little bit. Now this is a very simple way to do uh, the edge of the shirt to give it a little bit of definition here. Um, you can see that in the back we do have a slightly awkward angle running. We can either deal with that or leave it as we see fit. Um, I am kind of aiming for kind of a gunny sack cut into a, a cloth sort of situation, so uh, for the moment that's fine. And this is our uh, basic shape. We may be modifying it quite a bit later on in terms of exactly where everything lies, but the basic shape is complete, and that means that it's time to carve it up and UV map it. It's already been 20 minutes, so um, sorry that this is taking so long, but this is what it's like. No. 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 That's good. Um, that is correct for there, so we'll just mark that seam. And then we will mark this seam, except for we don't actually want to mark that one. We want to mark the one around the edge of this face here. Mark that seam. And then here we would like to mark it inside of our hem. Except that that would actually be annoying just due to the way that it, I'd have to click on it a whole bunch. So it'll be on the outside of the inside of the hem. We mark that. And we have a lot of options as to how we want to put the seams in, but in this case we're building cloth, and it actually makes sense to put the seams in where there might actually be seams, because that's how cloth is made. Um, we can do a whole lot more in terms of making these seams work better, but I think that this will be enough. If we pull over a new window and make it our UV map, we can see that there is a UV map because we cloned the underlying body, but it's pretty terrible, so we just unwrap it. And we have this UV map, and it's not wonderful, but it will work. You can see that one of our flaws is that we didn't put any cuts across the top of the shoulder. Um, I think that that might be a worthwhile thing to do, so let's go ahead and do that. Cut here and cut here. I think those are the same one. Yeah. Mark seam. And that'll actually split our front and our back half there. See? Uh, we do have something strange going on here, though. What is this? Hmm. I really don't know what that portion is, but it is... Ah, there it is. It looks like it's the inside of this seam here. So we're going to go ahead and add in just a little bit of a cut on the inside here. And down on the inside there. Where are you? Come on, stop dancing. There we are. And then we mark that seam. And that should prevent us from getting that weird sharp seam here. Yep, there we are. 
So if we save this as an hero 5, we can go over into Unity and import it. Of course, we've got our an hero 4 kind of lounging around here. An hero 5 has a problem, though, uh, in that I didn't delete the underlying body, so we're going to have to delete that manually. Uh, there's, there's a clone of it, and that clone will show up here because it doesn't stay hidden. Grind, 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 grind. Why is it re-importing in hero 4? Oh, wait. Oh, and hero 4 contains the primitive version of it. I just delete that. Uh, and hero 5, drop it in. Spin her around. And we want to delete uh, all of the body parts that aren't what we want. Delete it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. All right. I forgot to name the tunic something useful, but that's okay. So we have um, most of the uh, materials need to be reassigned. So let's put our pants on, and let's put our boots on, and let's put our hair on. Now if we look at our tunic, it's already got a random fabric applied to it, um, which actually doesn't look too weird, but it's too weird for my taste, so we'll drop this on it just as a placeholder. And you can see that it has some pop through down here in the leg, which is kind of what I expected. We're going to be binding this to the bones soon, next episode. Uh, so to deal with that, we are going to uh, we're going to do these kinds of adjustments then. Um, but definitely, dirt is a bad um, fabric for it. We could t do pants, or rather, uh, we could do the pants material, and that actually looks kind of interesting. Um, but it's not what we're going to do. We're going to have to export the UV map, but I don't like the way that it's rotated 90 degrees, so we're going to rotate it 90 degrees the other direction. You can use Alt-L or Control-L. Control-L to select an entire object so you can move it so it's not partially off screen. Uh, and we can save that, and we can also export the UV map so that we can uh, edit it. Now I think I created the UV, UV map of the pants on screen, so I don't need to do this on screen. So I'm going to see you next time when we finish off the belt and map everything to the bones.